and NFL Hot Wheels collectors. Been an interesting uh, couple of weeks. Got a new car, which is very nice. So to celebrate, went to a car boot sale with it. Also as well, have found a couple of little findings here and there in the charity shops. Anyway, starting with the car boot sale stuff. First up, we have a Corky Jr's US van. Now this is an absolutely beautiful yellow uh, silver van with Superman on the side. Now Benjamin Drake had two of these, but with the, uh, with the Leyland Terrier. This is the Superman one. And again, this isn't sort of like your nowadays sort of printing on tampos. That's paper. So these tampos to survive sort of like 30, 40 years later when these came out. That's amazing. Overall, the van's played with condition, but it's great to have it. Next up, we have yet another Porsche Carrera. This one in police form. And again, tampos on the side that are made of paper with police. Except for this edition is the later or possibly a one in a kind casting because it actually has light bars through the uh, top. And that's how the uh, British police sort of did their lights back in the day. Of course, the Americans have one light bar going across, and we had two lights in the top, which were blue and the siren. Again, overall casting in not too bad a condition. Nice little find. Next up, we have this cute little, uh, I think, sna yep, snail truck from Matchbox. No idea if Matchbox ever made any more of this. Clown, clown, clown. Okay, zoom that away. So quite an interesting little feature. The little uh, aerial things on top are a bit bent. That's why they're a bit discoloured. Snail little rear end, bit of chipping on it. Other than that though, in good condition. Hot Wheels 64 Riviera. Beautiful 2004 model, I think this is, or 2003. Nice wheels. Bit rusty on the axles. Nice anyway, nothing on the back. Very basic tampos. Overall, a nice little car to have. Next up, we have Shift Kicker. Probably about the only one from 2004, like a few, that has actually survived. This is from a five pack, or from a play pack, I can't remember. Now, this side, the wheels are red. That side, however, the wheels are faded. Now, I originally thought that this was um, some possible sort of like uh, fadedness. So I thought, oh, someone's painted that, so I tried scrubbing it. But then I saw the other side, and on South Texas, it is supposed to have those. Again, big old gear stick through there, which does move. Let's see. It's not supposed to move, but it does move a little bit with wear and tear. Car from my childhood. I used to have two of these. This is the uh, customised C3500. Sadly, the front wheel is missing all its chrome. Not an error. And if it was, then, well, I think it did have chrome on there, though. Well, it doesn't actually look like it did have chrome. <laughs> this might have been the one exception. But, again, nice overall tampos. Basic sort of uh, Hot Wheels construction, which is rather a shame, because they no longer do Hot Wheels construction stuff. Next up, we have another Corgi Juniors, Formula One racer. You may remember from the last video, the uh, Weetabix one. Well, here we have this. Apologies for the traffic going by outside. It's not usually this busy. Nice basic uh, 70s, I think. 1970s sort of uh, Formula One-esque type racer. So we've come a long way since these, which as you can see are very basic, not very aerodynamic, but probably faster than the ones of nowadays all the technology and fiddly bits that make it go. Next up we have a Porsche 928. Love the uh, unknown Porsches. It's like the ones that are basically not really known. But this one has a cool feature. Opening doors. Nice gold feature. Very cool interior. Basic and simple and brown. Overall a nice little car. I do like my Porsches that are strange. And some of them are pretty impressive. Next up from Matchbox again, another Porsche. Now you may remember the green one, the Turbo. I actually have two of those. Whilst photographing I found out I have two. So one of those is up for trades. I'll do a video on that later. Anyway, here is the Porsche Turbo with opening doors. Very play-worn, but overall in good condition. 
doors open and close spectacularly. It's just a nice model to have, Porsches. Still got the original tow hook. That was one of the things that came with Matchbox as standard. I don't know if Matchbox or Corgi started it, but I think Matchbox followed on or Corgi followed on, Majoretti followed on, whatever. Simple case of everything had to have a tow bar because you guarantee that a, tra a trailer will be fitted somehow to it. Anyway, next up we have a mouthful. We have the Vauxhall Astra D GTE uh, slash Opel Cadet S GSI. And I kid you not, that's what it says underneath there. All that writing. This is, of course, the classic uh, Vauxhall Astra, probably a Mark II. In nice uh, police cars, coupe as well, because it's got the little plastic bit on the back there. Very basic sort of overall look. This is what the uh, later 80s and 90s and nowadays police bars sort of look like. So they did go for the more American one, but they did have the metal bit in the middle. Very nice model that. Bit faded, I think, on the tempo. Moving back to the extremely ancient ones, we have from 69, I think, a Lamborghini. Uh, Marzel, M-A-Z-A-L, in beautiful orange, even though my camera is showing it as pink, it's actually in orange. I love the fact that there are uh, this side here. How do you open this long, big door? Lamborghinis, crazy mad, incredibly hard to drive, the front end as well. That's pretty cool. And the back end has a nice textured effect on the glass here. It's nice and textured. Four seats, which is very cool, but I don't even want to drive it in the back of these. It was very cramped, so unless you're small, you're not exactly going to fit in the back of it. Next up we have a Citroen Diane, or Duane, or I think Diane. This is basically the more luxurious version of the 2CV, from Corgi Juniors, I think. Yep, Corgi Juniors. Very nice basic sort of design. Nice cool opening boot. In great condition as well. Very textured, overall nice. Very nice looking car. Sorry about that if that was loud to you. Boot sh uh, snapping shut. Next up we have quite a rare one. We have a Majoretti Citroen DS21 Ambulance. Complete with flag. It only has one flag. I suspect that probably on this side it had a matching flag. Still got the original tampos on the side. Even rarer. This side though it is a lot warmer as you can see, but the best thing here is the fact that actually inside when you lift up the uh, back, I don't know if my camera is going to show this very well, as you can see in there you do actually have a patient, so you have actually got somebody on the stretcher waiting, and of course it is major, Majority, very cool car indeed, has the light bar on the top as well which is just the one. Moving on slightly, we go to Corgi uh, Juniors again. We have a Daimler Fleetline, a very early Daimler Fleetline. Unfortunately, tampos on this have worn off because they were only paper. But the inside, yes, it has people. This is pretty much a 1960s-esque sort of double-decker bus. Possibly a local bus as well. Might have been not notorious to London. Look, you've even got a driver in it as well, which is brilliant. The back has uh, nothing, unfortunately. Again, overall, a nice little car, or a nice little one to have. I don't know if that is a paper insert, or whether that is uh, plastic, but it looks like they have put plastic on there. Anyway, next up is the Majoretti Mercedes 350SL. Soft top. Very play-worn condition, this. Boot opens. Nothing in there, unfortunately. Usually with some Majorettes you'd have a sports coat or something in there. Very cool indeed. Big massive tow bar on the back end there. That is sharp as well. Nice red interior. Basic front end as well for Mercedes. Overall just a very nice car. Next up we have a Chevy Pro Stocker. Unfortunately this one looks like someone started to make a custom but never really got round to it. I think it was someone called Lightning because that's all that's left of the front end, unless this is very, very play-worn. But judging by those scratch marks on the back there, I would suggest someone was going to make this into a custom, but never got round to it. Might have been it was too good and regretted doing it later on. 
Next up we have something to celebrate Great Britain and something that is actually quite a collector's item and something that collectors do actually go for. Uh, if you're a British collector, you probably do get a few collectors who go for mostly uh, Beatles memorabilia, Elvis memorabilia, even though he's American, etc, etc. Well, there's also Queen memorabilia. So everything that is related to the royal family or the Queen is collected. And this is quite a rare thing. This is the Silver Jubilee from 1952 to 1977. Very cool. Matchbox, the Londoner bus. In silver, complete with paper tampos on the side, with the Jubilee, which is there. Now, I can actually tell you that uh, my mum, who is very old, can actually remember in 1952 watching it on very early TV sets. So basically, yeah, 1952, not many TV sets were around. In fact, if you had a TV set, you could guarantee when you go to your grandparents' home, which is probably very small and claustrophobic, can you imagine about, well, the entire street crammed into that one little room to watch the coronation? Yeah. Of course, in 77, TVs would have been, well, franchised and worldwide. Cool thing about this is the usual London here, it has one closed door, and this one's open. Usually it has two closed doors. I don't have another copy because I put them all away. But either way, cool little thing to have. And a nice little collectible. Anyway, the more rarer stuff I found was some older 90s and 2000 uh, carded Hot Wheels cars. First up on a USA long card, I think, or international, is a 2000, I think. Yep, 2000, collector number 47, teed off from the Gulf Street Club. There is the card, and there is the vehicle. This is the black one with the hood. 90% of the time, if you do buy one of these pre-owned, the hood will be missing. It's very easy to pop off. So you can collect the entire Secret Code series, which was Screaming Hauler, Baby Boomer, and Fiat 500. This is from 2000. Original information all on the back there of all the play sets. That's pretty much sort of like summing up America in one place where a kid could set up an entire playroom, sort of like in their bedroom. That's how big American kids' playrooms were. Because basically you'd have your bedroom and then you'd have a playroom, which is basically sort of like the spare room in the UK. Anyway, next up we have quite a rare one. We have a 1996 first edition Radio Flyer. Now I am very happy to find this. Also as well, I've never heard of a place called AAFEC. Wherever it was in America, that's the original price that you were paying in 1996 or 97. 75 cents. Do you remember that? When Hot Wheels cars used to be 75 cents. Anyway, the card is a little bit battered, a little bit beaten up. But anyway, it is incredibly rare to find older cars, especially 90s on the card. Unfortunately there were two that I missed out on. Somebody had already got there. Darn. But anyway, to find the card to find anything carded is amazing. And that is brilliant. That's those two. Oh I didn't actually show the back end as well either. This is basically this is basically what you would call a blue and white card. Because it starts off as a blue card and then has a bit of white at the bottom. Anyway on the back, nineteen ninety five copyright Oh yeah, and there's also as well the official Hot Wheels newsletter, which expires 10 for the first 97. I think I'm a little bit late for that, to be precise, about 15-ish years late. But still a nice little thing to have. No, it won't be cracked, mainly because I haven't found a better one than that. Anyway, have been to uh, my charity shop after doing my course. I've found a few little finds. First up, we start with the Hot Wheels. We have T Grey, a very nice uh, sort of fantasy car. Metal body or metal base, plastic top. Nice uh, sort of track car, I definitely agree with race grooves on that. Next up, we have a Matchbox Ford Mustang GTCS 1968. Again, your Mustang fans out there probably wanting this one to your collection. Oh, I found this. Bit of wear underneath, but other than that, nice nonetheless. And also, well, it seems to be a case of 
micro machines are making a comeback or someone is making a bit of a killing off of uh, micro type esque machines. Now I've picked these up, I don't know what on earth they were but they were very nice and I thought oh more of these. You may remember ages ago and they're probably buried somewhere in all this Hot Wheels collection that uh, I showed you what looked like a matchbox but, or uh, micro machines but it wasn't. Well these have the exact same wheels as those but are different. This is a tow truck nice cool little moving feature even the little hook moves up and down as you can see it's a nice little thing I don't know if these and these are heavy as well these are like pure metal these are all sort of like metal bodied metal based so they're quite heavy especially some of these bigger ones so next up we have the police one which is of course a natural nice police one no uh, movement bar in the front end it has a light bar again all metal I think the bases are actually plastic. Yeah, bases are plastic. Let's just check. Yep, plastic. Next up we have what I think is a bulldozer, or possibly a mover of stuff, but to me it is a bulldozer. And you're not jo I'm not joking, this is heavy. All of that is pure metal. I have no idea who is making these. All they've got on them is China and various what looks like product codes. But they are so incredibly basic and so brilliant that I love them. Cool little feature about this is as you can see the front does move so you can lift it up to go forwards, push it down, whoops, too far, and then you can sort of like bulldoze the stuff out of the way, which is brilliant. Another heavy casting is this ambulance just with rescue on it. Heavy, I mean these are this is all pure metal body. This is no sort of like little flimsy plastic. This is all metal, basic sort of uh, decos, red and white. No blue, unfortunately. If the rescue had been in blue, race grooves probably would have wanted it. But then again, am I going to give that to race grooves? That's a choking hazard. Haha, <laughs> I kid. Anyway, next up we have another bulldozer or earth type mover, and again, same size as the other one, sort of big. But look at it. That is amazing. I've no idea what these are. I don't know if these are matchbox. Hot Wheels, some cheap brand company? I've no idea. They are very heavy though. And finally, the last one is a cool little sports car. Looks like uh, possibly not a Nissan, but a um, Dodge. Possibly sort of like a sort of like sporty Viper of some kind. Very nice car indeed. Blue with some white stripes on it. Anyway, that is about it. Apart from one little thing. Ages ago, I had in my trade video just a very basic bottom end of Outlander, I think it was called, or Lakester. I just had the base unit, no top. Now, I actually found a top for it, and I thought, oh, I've, I've got the base unit for that. Oh, well, they probably won't match. Turns out they do match. And the 2009 Pirate series is this one. I think it's from a five-pack or a playset. Now all this had was literally just the gold base. And I've, I held on to it because I thought, well, the wheels are nice and the plastic could be used for something else. But yeah, I found the base. No, uh, no top. I found this bit here. And I was really happy. So I thought if it's the wrong base, I can just say, oh, I've made a custom. But no, it was the right base. Really surprised at that. But anyway, that is about it. All that's left now is to record some carded stuff. Hmm, what carded stuff have I found other than those? You just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching.